it is great to take the opportunity to be sitting with two licensed insolvency practitioners, Katie McLachlan and Scott Bastick, today um, with myself, Claire Middlebrook. Just before this, Scott and I were chatting about bounce back loans. They came in really quickly due to the COVID pandemic and Scott taught me something that they were actually quite expensive and I wondered if you had anything more to say about that, Scott. Yeah, I think... Um... When the bounce back loans were first introduced, everyone was quite desperate for the cash. Um, and in reality, what happened was in terms of they just all went ahead and made the applications without actually working out the implications it was going to have for their cash flow further down the line. So in reality, with a six month repayment term, interest deferred for the first 12 months or picked up by the government, the reality of it is that after you've got a relatively short period of time in which to, to repay what could be quite a large sum of money. So what that's done is then for a lot of people in under desperate Kind of circumstances, what they were doing was just going ahead, applying for the maximum they could get without thinking through the impact it was going to have on their businesses. And then subsequently what's happened is when they've started making the repayments, they've realised that there is actually quite a big pool on their monthly cash flow. And are you seeing quite often people that just didn't quite realise what they were getting into a bounce back loan then? Yeah, initially what we would see quite a lot was people where they're taking the funds, didn't actually necessarily need them at the time, but what they were doing is they were sitting on the funds, so it was there as a sort of rainy day fund in terms of whether if, if the business did need it, because everyone had such a short period of time in which to decide if they were going to apply for the money, and, and there was so much uncertainty when the COVID kind of hit, etc. So what we're seeing now is that people have dipped into that, they've allowed it to support a reduction in their turnover, etc., and we're now seeing that as they're making payments, conditions have changed in the market and then what they're getting is a situation whereby they're struggling on a monthly basis to be able to maintain those payments. And have you even seen people that didn't realise that it was even a loan? Not so much that. I think everyone had an understanding of what it was and it was going to be repayable. There was a bit of a misconception in terms of personal liability because some people feel that they are personally liable, but it's obviously they're not as long as they've used the funds for the, the, the intended purposes. What we're seeing more is in terms of people not necessarily having done the calculations, realised a lot of people have made mistakes in terms of the actual estimated turnover um, and the accounts, what they're allowed to take, etc. That part of it is probably what we're seeing more of and what we're having to do is have a look at their circumstances in advance them entering into a process just to give them a bit of reassurance about how it's going to look. Are you able to explain a little bit more about the estimated turnover element of it because I know that some of the things I've seen there's been a bit an element of confusion about that and some of the directors have said well we might have been entitled to that what, what, yeah, what I was think your the, understanding the application and, and from memory I think you had to have been trading as at the first of March 2020 to make an application so you had to have had a trading position at that point I think it was based upon your last set of accounts but if you hadn't prepared accounts as at the date of making an application you could choose what your estimated turnover was going to be and that's what the problem catching a lot of people out is a lot of people where with newer companies they've just gone for the maximum amount not necessarily understanding that they were making a declaration that their turnover was going to be or there was a reasonable expectation that their turnover was going to be three hundred thousand pounds a year um, to bring Katie into the discussion, I know that part of your day-to-day -day role is sitting down with directors that uh, have got bounce back loans and are concerned about them. What are some of the things that you talk to them about when you initially meet them? Yeah, so of course we want to hear their story, what they've done, how their business has gotten to the stage it's at and just give them the forum to get that all off their chest. Um, but in terms of the bounce back loan specifically, we're looking to find out how much they borrowed in the first place, how much they've repaid and whether they've been making these repayments as scheduled, what kind of discussions they've had with the bank, if any, in terms of the difficulties they're having. And thereafter, we can give them some advice on what to do next. And what would be your one piece of advice when you're sitting down with a director about bounce back loans? If there was one thing that you wanted them to tell you, what would it be? I would say just be honest. Um, people have taken the loans and there's been a variety of issues in terms of, as Scott said, people perhaps taking more than they were entitled to. Then there's all the, the kind of things that fall into what they use the loans for. Um, but you're better to just be open and honest about that up front so that you can get proper advice rather than sort of misleading or not giving the full picture of information. And is it fair to say, following on from that point, that if the directors are open and honest, right at the outset, there's more options that they might 
that we might be able to suggest to them. Absolutely. If they give us the full picture from the beginning, we can really present them with every viable option that might be available. And we can tell them what might be best for their circumstances. That might not always be a formal insolvency process. There might be something else that might suit their circumstances better. But unless they're you know, transparent with that, then we can only provide advice based on what they tell us. And in your experience, and I'll throw the floor open to yourself, Katie, or you, Scott, what happens when a director hasn't been as honest about the bounce back loan? Have you found yourself in some having some difficult conversations with them and how do you approach that? Yeah, we've had a number of difficult conversations, unfortunately. Um, I mean, the reality of it is people have acted in what they perceive to be the best circumstances at the time. Um, but in reality, I think in terms of for us, it's just about being honest and, and open with them in terms of what the consequences are going to be. Worst case scenario, you're looking at a third party investigation of it if they're not in a position to repay the funds. Um, and we would obviously much prefer that we were aware of any of these problems in advance of commencing the process. Um, but to date, I think there's a few cases we've had whereby it's turned particularly difficult, but for the vast majority of them, I've been able to find a resolution. Mm -hmm. That will probably give people some comfort then, I would imagine, because the individuals that I've been speaking to are extremely stressed about it. And because they were rushed into it, um, they, they're facing the unknown now and one of the things I often think is if we can even give somebody an unknown even if it's an unpleasant unknown at least they've got something to work with then can you tell me a little bit Katie about the type of work that we have to do once the director has decided that liquidation is the option um, and there is a bounce back loan can you tell us a little bit about what we have to do then yeah of course so when a director decides to proceed with a liquidation on an insolvent basis, the liquidator is duty bound to conduct some investigations into the pre-appointment dealings of the company. Um, we're required to submit a report to the insolvency service on the conduct of the director. And as part of that, we'll investigate exactly how they ran the business in the run up to the insolvency. Specifically with regards to the bounce back loans, um, of course, the insolvency service pay at the moment are paying particular attention to that. So we have to look at the loan that you took, whether you took the sum that you were entitled to based off of your turnover, and then we have to investigate what you spent that money on. So a big chunk of that is looking at the bank statements of the company, seeing when the money came in, and then ultimately what it was used for. Um, and we are looking for those big sort of red flags in terms of large withdrawals to personal accounts, um, you know, obvious personal spending and things. Um, and transactions like that will be questioned because they're not evidently business transactions. That's really helpful. And as part of that process, what would your top tip be to the directors if they get a, a letter from Middlebrooks, let's say, as an appointed insolvency practitioner or any other insolvency practitioner about bounce back loan? What would your top tip to the director be? Probably the most important thing is to deal with the issue. Don't bury your head in the sand because once a liquidator is appointed, there's no going back on that. So you need to cooperate with the investigations. In fact, you're legally obligated to cooperate with the investigations. Um, you know, if the liquidator finds that perhaps you have used the bounce back loan for some personal spending or for something that it strictly shouldn't have been used for, the easiest way to deal with that is to come to the table and explain your position. Um, you know, we have a duty to get the best possible outcome for creditors. That is who we're working for. But we do want to work with the directors to find a kind of mutually helpful solution to their problems. And the only way to do that is to communicate burying your head in the sand won't make the problem go away, unfortunately. It will just escalate it. And there are, you know, options available to liquidators in terms of legal actions and, you know, personal liability then does become an issue. Thanks very much. And Scott, in your experience, and I know that every case is different because there are intricacies in all of them, but what are some of the, where, where you found that a director has potentially mistakenly got a bounce back loan that was too high for example or there is some element of that personal liability that Katie was talking about what are some of the things that you've seen have happened um, to the director and some of the options that they've got available to them? Yeah I think the biggest issue we've seen is the fact that directors were so used to withdrawing their funds by way of directors loan accounts mm -hmm. So they would just be withdrawing the funds that would be applied to the director's loan accounts at the end of the year, subject to the company being sufficiently profitable, they would declare a dividend, it would clear it out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the directors 
continued working on that basis after the bounce back loan funds were received, but the business wasn't continuing to trade. So it was only during that period they were able to, it was the only way they could get their funds out essentially, was just continuing as they were. Um, and in that situation, what we have found once we're appointed is that we need to, to seek the recovery of these funds. Mm -hmm. So we need to negotiate with the directors in respect. Firstly, we need to explain to them that they've actually taken the funds out in a way that's not appropriate given the company's entered into liquidation. And then we need to deal with that in terms of seeking repayment. Um, the worst case scenario, they're not in a position to do that. What you'd be looking at is enforcement action in respect to trying to recover those sums. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is whilst we've encountered this on a number of cases, there's only been very few cases that we've actually had to reach that stage. Um, most of them have been in a position whereby we can come to some form of agreement with them, whereby we'll seek repayment over a longer period of time, or there's a negotiation to be had in respect of it, whereby creditors are no worse off than what they would have been had we taken that action in order to enforce it. Well, that's really good because, again, it seems to be the bit that everyone is concerned about. It's that unknown element of it all, and you seem like you're sort of standing at the edge of an abyss looking into it, thinking what's going to happen there. So hopefully what we've been able to do today is have a bit of a chat about what happens if you find yourself with a bounce back loan that you're unable to pay and, and, and what the ramifications of that might be. So I really want to thank you both for your time.